joining us live, the former CIA officer now speaking out about the harsh interrogations of top al-Qaeda prisoners as the scandal in Washington grows over who destroyed tapes of those interrogations and whether laws were broken. And day two of our series, Bush League Justice. Forget laws broken, President Bush often just ignores them, using near secret decrees to decide which laws he wants to follow. Plus, suspect Drew Peterson may be deciding which laws he wants to follow, as just about everyone else searches for his missing wife. He now wants your money this holiday season. But first, new details tonight about the destruction of the CIA's secret tapes. Today, the New York Times reports that the CIA lawyers gave the go-ahead to destroy the 2002 video of al-Qaeda operatives undergoing, quote, enhanced interrogation techniques. But who ordered the enhanced interrogations, including waterboarding, and the destruction of those tapes? Are we to believe that neither the president nor any of his closest advisors knew about it? Today, the president made his first public comments on the story. My first recollection of whether the tapes existed or whether they were destroyed was when Michael Hayden briefed me. Okay, but back in 2006, the president sure seemed to know the details of the interrogations themselves. He said these procedures were designed to be safe, to comply with our laws, our constitution, and our treaty obligations. Today, the CIA director, General Michael Hayden, testified behind closed doors before two intelligence committees. This emits talk of possible pardons from some on the right, but let's be clear. The law would likely protect the actual interrogators, just not necessarily the officials who ordered them to do it. So, how did all this work? Who ordered it? Did the White House know? Joining us now, uh, live, is John Kiriakou, who spent 14 years as a CIA agent and who was involved in the capture and interrogation of top al-Qaeda operative Abu Zubaydah. Thanks a lot for taking the time. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, first tell me what happened to Abu Zubaydah after he was captured. Uh, he was severely wounded during the capture. He uh, was involved in a firefight with Pakistani authorities, and uh, he was shot three times, once in the, in the groin, once in the thigh, and once in the stomach with an AK-47. So he was, he was in quite uh, poor physical condition when we finally got him. And what happened? So you got him, you got a chance to, to interrogate him, to question him. How did that go? I, you know, I honestly wouldn't call it a, an interrogation because he was, he was so severely wounded. He was coming in and out of a coma, and I wanted to see if I could, at least as he was, as he was getting better in the first couple of days, if I could establish something of a rapport with him. So I, I tried to engage him in, in conversation. At, at first, it was, it was something of a gibberish conversation. He asked for a glass of wine. He, he made a comment about not wanting to be treated like a, like a zoo animal. And then he finally came around a day or so later and, uh, and, and first asked me to smother him with a pillow, and then uh, after that wanted to talk about philosophy and poetry right. and religion. But w when was it that he was waterboarded? Uh, it wasn't until, until a couple of months after he was captured, after he had physically recovered and it was determined that, that he was uncooperative and he was going to remain uncooperative. Um, how did you get approval for this technique and some of the other techniques? It, w it was a very formal process. Uh, I've explained uh, on, on some other shows today that, that when, when these authorities were sought by, by a, an officer in the field, uh, a cable would go back to headquarters saying, this is what I want to do and this is why I want to do it and we're going to do it once. And that cable would go back to, uh, to headquarters to the deputy director for operations and they would seriously consider the case and on a case-by-case -case basis say, all right, you can, you're approved to do X, Y, or Z, you do it once and you report back what happened. And, and waterboarding was included in that approval process, right? Yes, all of, the, all of the enhanced techniques were included in the approval process. So do you believe that the White House ultimately knew that he was being waterboarded? Absolutely. Um, and what about other techniques? I mean, was there other aggressive techniques, slapping, hitting, anything else like that? To the best of my recollection, no, not with Abu Zubaydah. You see, there was, there was such immediacy around the information that we thought he could provide, and we were so worried about a, a potential disastrous September 11th-like uh, attack on U.S. soil or against U.S. interests abroad that, that we felt really an immediate need to, to try to get the information mm -hmm. very quickly. How, you said not with Abu Zubaydah. How about with anyone else? Were there any other very aggressive that might be considered torturous techniques used on other detainees? You know, I, I, honestly, I probably shouldn't comment on that. Um, can I ask you why, why you talk about Abu Zubaydah but not others? Because the, the president has commented about Abu Zubaydah, and, uh, you know, it's, it's become part of the national debate. 
Okay, fair enough. Do you, now, do you believe it's torture, waterboarding? I've come to believe that it's torture, yes. But not to say that I disagree with its use back in 2002. It, it was a different time, and we were so convinced that there was another major attack coming. We felt that, that we were almost forced into it. it. It was something that we had to do on an extremely limited basis, but we had to get that information to either disrupt or forestall another terrorist attack. Now, you know there are a lot of people now responding to your comments saying, look, waterboarding doesn't work. You don't get truthful information from waterboarding. In some cases, I think that's true. Uh, with Abu Zubaydah, however, uh, waterboarding worked very well, very convincingly. How, how are you so confident that the information that you got from him was accurate? We were able to corroborate it using, using other sources uh, and vet the information, and it turned out to be accurate. Now, the, the CIA director has defended the destruction of the tapes by saying it was to protect the identities of those involved, and yet you're going public. What do you make of that rationale? You know, if, if, if the director uh, says it, I have no doubt that he believes it. Uh, I disagree, and I think that it's, uh, it's not a convincing reason, at least uh, from my perspective. You don't think those tapes should have been destroyed? I don't. I think they're, that they're a matter of historical record. Uh, they may have evidentiary importance, and, uh, you know, if they're, if they're that sensitive, then you just lock them up in a safe or in a vault well, in CIA headquarters. Why are you going public now? Are you allowed to speak publicly? I'm allowed to speak pub publicly so long as I don't reveal sources and methods or reveal classified information, which, which I don't believe I've done. Uh, the reason I, I've gone public is when, when this story broke about the videotapes being destroyed, it also dragged back to the surface the whole issue of waterboarding. And I think, honestly, that the agency has gotten a bum rap on waterboarding. This isn't something that the agency, as a rogue organization, just decided to do one day to prisoners. This was something that was done because there was a genuine concern for, for the safety of American citizens and, and, and to protect American lives. And in 2002, I think, honestly, that our, that our hand was forced. Now, here we are five years later, we've had five years to develop sources, we've had five years to improve our relationships with foreign governments, and presumably we've used those five years to, to really improve the quality of our information. As a result, I would say that waterboarding is, is uh, not necessary anymore.